the introduction. <laughs> in recent years, a new medium of performed 2D characters has emerged. Cartoon characters have started to appear live on streaming platforms and broadcast TV. The primary motion of the character is controlled by the performer with face tracking or mouse and touch input. The primary animation is the motion of the main body of the character or the parts of the character that are most important to the story. Notice, as the user heads moves, the character head here also moves. In addition, a critical aspect of creating expressive animated characters is the presence of secondary motion. This is the small mo mo movements of parts of the character, like hair, clothing, tails, and fur, which react to and emphasize the primary motion of the character. Notice that the performer does not control the secondary animation of the dreadlocks, but instead it reacts to the performer's or the character's head. Our goal is to make it easier for artists to add secondary animation to their illustrated characters. The input of our system is a performance of the primary motion of the character, as shown on the left. In our result on the right, we add secondary animation. Our solution augments the layer-based representation of illustrated characters to enable the creation of automatic secondary animation. To better understand the variety of secondary motion that animators typically apply to 2D illustrated characters, we curated a set of 29 short animations created using a layer-based approach. These examples, of which a subset are seen here, are between 30 seconds and 12 minutes long and include short films, advertisements, TV series, and promotional videos. For each animation, we identified all instances of secondary motion. We found a total of 86 instances of secondary animation that were mostly applied to tails, clothing, hair, large appendages such as ears, and hanging objects such as necklaces and ties. From these, we were able to develop the secondary animation categories of trailing motion, swaying, and jiggling. Trailing motion occurs on appendages like tails and tentacles, and the motion of the appendage roughly follows the trajectory of the character. In most cases, the length does not change. However, squash and stretch can be applied to exaggerate the motion of the character. Long skinny parts, like necklaces, scarves, or hair, often exhibit swaying. Whereas heavier objects, such as a kid's arm, may sway in a slower, stiff manner, lighter objects, like a necklace or tie, often move more freely. Jiggling occurs in the small protrusions or appendages, like tufts of fur, spikes, or pieces of clothing. They continue to move once the character stops or changes direction. And the jiggling varies with the properties of the relevant parts. Previous work has been unable to satisfy easily adding secondary animation to perform illustrated characters. As I mentioned previously, performed animations benefit from the prol proliferation of digital inputs such as motion capture, video puppetry, and touch interfaces. However, these works focus on the primary motion of performance, not the secondary animation. Procedural creation of secondary animation has been used extensively in animation systems such as K-Sketch, Draco, Kitty, motion amplifiers, and energy brushes. These systems are useful for authoring predefined motions, but not online performed animations. While the secondary amplifier and motion amplifiers could potentially generate jiggling effects for performed motion, it does not handle external forces like collision, gravity, and wind that are critical in many performed settings. In offline or keyframe animation software, simulation is a go-to method for automatic secondary animation of hair, cloth, and collisions. Simulations assume full knowledge of the system, including geometry and other properties. This requirement makes it difficult to apply simulation to a layered composition of 2D artwork. Buildings on the findings in these papers, we base our approach within a constrained dynamics formulation, which gives us a general purpose mechanism for delivering plausible secondary effects that also track performance-induced constraints. Most commercial tools, such as Maya and After Effects, are designed for offline rather than online animation. While these tools support general physical simulation, which can generate secondary effects, doing so requires extensive low-level setup. 
Game frameworks like Unity and Spine2D also support real-time animation under human control. Most games add secondary effects to a fixed set of characters. These effects are specific movements so game developers can plan ahead by tuning the behaviors for the particular motions in the game. In contrast, our goal is to enhance performed storytelling with user-generated artwork and performances. The previous work all have drawbacks which make them unable to easily add secondary effects to perform 2D characters. A key contribution of our work is a simple but powerful rigging system that leverages physical simulation and makes it easier to create secondary effects for layered 2D artwork. Our approach has two parts. An offline portion where the user designs, draws, and rigs the character, and an online portion where the user performs the primary animation and we simulate the secondary animation. One challenge when simulating the secondary animation is that we do not know the performed primary motion ahead of time. As a result, we have to design a system that will respond to any possible primary motion in real time. To add secondary motion for performed 2D animation, we introduce a set of physically inspired rigs, the follow rig, the rest pose rig, and the collision rig. They are designed to propagate motion between the layers of an illustrated character in a way that produces convincing and controllable secondary animation. Collectively, they cover the range of secondary motions, trailing motion, swaying, and jiggling, that we determine from our classification of examples. When designing our rigs, we made sure to satisfy four properties. First, we wanted our rigs to be easy to create. By simplifying the rigging process, we enable users to quickly add secondary effects to new characters. We also streamline the parameter tuning process by exposing a small set of parameters that nonetheless support a wide range of effects. Second, our rigs create plausible motion by using physical simulation to propagate motion. The use of simulation enables secondary parts to respond naturally to external forces like wind, gravity, and collisions. Next, our system is modular and accommodates changing the simulation process as appropriate. As a result, our approach can leverage the ever-evolving state-of-the-art in simulation techniques and even combine multiple simulations to capitalize on the unique benefits of each method. Finally, our rigs are composable. Multiple rigs can be applied to the same character to induce secondary animations that compose the effects of different motion propagation methods. To achieve the three types of secondary motion described previously, trailing motion, swaying, and jiggling, we use our workflow to add our rigs to an illustrated character. First, we leverage the fact that most artists already create their layers, their characters in a layered format using image editing software such as Photoshop. To animate these characters, the layers deform. Notice the body of the snowman and the scarf bending as they sway. These deformations are controlled by handles. We calculate the deformations from a set of handle positions using bounded by harmonic weights by Jacobson et al. For online performed animation, the animator cannot control all of these handles in real time. Hence, we only want the user to control a couple of these handles, and we need to specify the motion of the other ones to produce secondary motion. In the workflow that we propose, there are a variety of handle types that an artist can add to the artwork. The control handles are directly controlled by the user via face tracking, body tracking, or mouse and touch input. And these specify the primary motion of the character. Attachment handles specify constraint between parent and child layers. To apply our secondary animation rigs, the user adds two additional types of handles. Origin handles inherit the primary motion of the character as specified by the performance. Response handles determine how the primary motion is propagated to different parts of the character. Only the control handles will be controlled during a user's performance. The movement of all the other handles is automatically computed. To make the animations physically plausible, we implement our approach within a constrained dynamics framework. In particular, we use the popular Box2D implementation of 2D constrained dynamics which provides a set of useful low-level primitives for specifying constraints, including springs, pivots, and prismatic joints. 
we construct our secondary motion rigs with these primitives. The first rig is the follow rig, which pulls a trailing appendage along a trajectory defined by the primary motion of the character. It produces trailing motion. To apply the follow rig to this airplane, the user creates a set of ordered handles. The first handle is the origin in dark purple, and the following handles are response handles. From this set of order handles, we create mass bodies and connect them with springs. As the origin handle moves, we construct a set of reference points, one for each response handle. These lie on the trajectory of the origin handle. The exact positions of the reference points are determined by a 1D spring simulation that aims to keep the arc length distances between the handles the same as in the rest pose of the appendage. Then we set all the springs to be the same strength. And finally, we connect the reference handle bodies to the reference bodies to encourage the appendage to follow along the origin trajectory. The user can change the parameters of K, which we call the stretchiness, and the follow strength, which is the stiffness of the light gray springs. Here is our result with the follow rig applied to the banner. It trails behind the path of the plane. The second rig is the rest pose rig. It allows appendages to return to their rest pose and causes jiggling and swaying effects. The user specifies origin handles in dark blue and also a set of response handles in light blue that control how the part deforms in response to the primary motion. From these handle positions, we create bodies and connect the nearest neighbors with springs. Next, we create reference bodies which define the rest shape of the underlying part based on the current state of the character. We position and orient the reference bodies where the response handles would be given the overall deformation induced by a set of control handles at the current frame. If we simply set the response handles to the corresponding reference point positions and orientations, the underlying part would just deform based on the primary motion. Instead, we attach reference points to the corresponding handles with linear springs that directly pull each handle towards its reference in a more organic manner, creating this lattice rest pose rig. In this example, we apply a rest pose rig to the ghost. As the primary part moves, the secondary part sways and jiggles in response, eventually returning to the rest pose when the motion stops. If a character part is long and skinny, like the snowman scarf, a lattice connecting the handles is not necessary, since the structure of the artwork is better represented as a 1D rope. Please see our paper for a description. During animation, the head motion is performed with face tracking, and the arms are controlled with multi-touch input. The scarf is automatically driven by two rope rest pose rigs. To handle collisions between character parts, we propose the collision rig. The user defines the handles of the collision rig, which interact with other parts of the scene. Then we, from these user-specified handles, we create bodies, and we also create rectangular bodies for colliding. The length of each rectangular body is equal to the distance between two handle bodies. This diagram shows the path pulled apart. We add pivot joints between the handle bodies and the rectangles for bending, and then we add springs in between the rectangular bodies. Here, the lily pads are pushed by the front of the frog's head, but are free to overlap the back of the frog, which is meant to be underwater. We combine a collision rig on the frog's head and a rest pose rig on the water and the frog's legs. For this dancer, her leg will collide with the first red layer of the dress. As that one deforms, it will push against and move the orange layer, which will then affect the yellow layer. As her leg dances up and out, her dress floats and ruffles along with the main movement. To combine the different rigs described above, the user can either attach separate rigs with separate sets of handles to different parts of a character, or they can reuse the same set of handles to produce multiple types of secondary motion, as shown here. In this example, the octopus has two rigs attached, a follow rig and a rest pose rig, both using the same purple handles. In addition, we add a rest pose rig to the kelp. Adding wind to the scene creates a water swaying effect as the octopus swims. Notice when she stops swimming that her tentacles slowly return to their rest pose. 
This dragon has a follow rig in purple applied to the main skeleton and a rest pose rig in blue applied to his mane and tail. Our rigs add trailing motion to the dragon's body and jiggling to the dragon's mane and tail. Here, we apply a collision and rest pose rig to the umbrella and add a rest pose rig to the girl's hat. In our result, the umbrella bounces as the rain falls on it and it keeps the girl dry. Her hat also jiggles slightly as she walks. To investigate the effectiveness of our approach, we conducted an exploratory study where people use our system and provided feedback on our rigging and performance-driven animation tools by animating these three characters. Overall, the participants were able to quickly produce a range of secondary effects across the three tasks. They found it easy to create the various rigs and were pleased with the secondary motion that they produce. Participants had some usability challenges, such as forgetting to explicitly create an origin handle rather than creating or only response handles, and some participants were also confused about the parameter names and ranges. However, after spending a few minutes adjusting the parameter settings, they were able to achieve a pleasing result. While we cover a large range of secondary animation on a variety of characters, there are additional areas for exploration. One can improve the process of creating layered character artwork for animation. There could be an automatic process that decomposes a single flat drawing into a layered hierarchy by learning from examples. Another area of future work, the creation of extra controls, was proposed by participants in our user study. For example, they requested the ability to separate handles of our rigs into groups to have finer control rather than just changing the parameters for the whole rig. Finally, we would like to relax our assumption that the underlying artwork driven by the rigs is unchanging. In some cases, the artist might prefer to swap out the artwork while keeping the secondary animation of parts temporally coherent. For instance, if a running squirrel turns around, the trailing motion of the tail needs to flow smoothly behind it during that curve, and the animator might have to switch the artwork in order to prevent unpleasant deformations in the tail. We propose a set of tools which allow artists to easily add and manipulate secondary motion on parts of their characters. We built these tools on top of common physical prim primitives such as springs, pivots, and bodies with masks that our most physical simulators already support. Our proposed rigs enable novice and experienced animators to add extra richness to their characters, enhancing the live performances that those characters star in. Thank you for your attention. Brandon Dalton, University of Southern California. So I was wondering if you guys were thinking about um, creating a different kind of collision rig that allows for some aspect of uh, semi-permeability, which could have like applications in biological animations. We hadn't considered that, but that would be an interesting area to explore. Thank you. Uh, that would be easy to add. I think you would have to think about how many controls there are on the character. So for instance, if you already had two or three other spots that the user is touching and controlling during performance, it might be hard to schedule switching from one of those to actually picking up the dress and moving it. Hi, hi uh, Ariel Weingarten from UCSD Design Lab. Um, you know, this tool eliminates a lot of work. It's kind of like a form of automation. And so you freed up a lot of people's time. Where in the creation process would they refocus that time? Or would they just like leave work early? <laughs> Wherever they choose. I mean, they could design more complicated characters, or they could put more effort into their perfecting the performance that they want to do with the animation. Okay, cool. Thanks.